This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You guys, I have a new favorite iPad animation app and no, it is not Draw Stickman Epic 2. It's Toon Squid, which pulls some features from desktop apps like Adobe Animate and After Effects and brings them onto the iPad to really streamline what's already a pretty solid frame by frame animation app. Hello, my name is Brad, I review tech for creative professionals. So what makes this so good? Well, they've added some features that really speed up animation in a lot of ways, especially the kind of animation I do here. For example, there's some tweening features there's a nice symbol library. They've even streamlined the way you can do lip syncing. Some great stuff here, so let's take a look. So off the bat, we have all the normal drawing tools along the side you'd expect. You know, you got your pencil, you got eraser, fill tool, smudge tool, color picker, that sort of thing. Over here, we have layers. We have settings for those layers. You can delete layers. So this is a very basic drawing program. There are some different brushes and things you can pick from, but not a ton. There's some sketching tools, some painting tools. There's even some vector tools in here, which is kind of cool. And down here uh, along the bottom, I can pull this up. And this is basically our timeline. And this works like a frame by frame animation tool. I could come in here with my pencil and I could draw in, you know, different things. And then I can hit play and it's just gonna play my frame by frame animation. And of course there's things like onion skinning and the type of things you would expect to find in any frame by frame animation tool. Now for the most part, I find myself drawing in something like Procreate and then pulling all my imagery over. So let me jump over to another project here. One of the things that makes that possible is this library. And what's cool about the library is I have a bunch of mouths here. That's why you're seeing seeing those. But I have my animation broken up. So I've got my background, I've got my character, I've got my foreground. All of those are at play here. So let me pull up this and I could go ahead and grab my character and I can move him around the scene as I, as I need him. Now down here, I also have keyframes on these. So this little icon here, if I tap that, it brings up my keyframes. And there's some different stuff going on here. We can change the position, the rotation, the scale, the opacity. So let's, let's play with the position. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. And then maybe on frame 14, we move him over here. So I'm gonna go back to the first frame and I'm actually gonna move him you know, out of my scene. And then when I hit play, he's just gonna animate in. So I don't have to do that frame by frame. I don't have to do all those details. I can use these kind of quick keyframe animations to do that. So let's go back because there's, there's some more. There's also this little grid thing that appears once you have an animation in play. And basically what this does is it brings easing into your animation. And if you're wondering what easing is, when that character moves, he moves the same distance on every single frame, but there's different kinds of easing. So this will start him off a little faster and as he gets to the end he'll he'll slow down let's go ahead and play that and you can see how that plays out so he kind of eases into the frame there's some other ones uh, this is a little bit more and some of these just kind of add a little bit more easing to it this is a little heavier like he just whoop, kind of slides in a little faster there there's some weirder ones there's like bounce and elastic I'll show you elastic really quick yeah, that, that moved a little too fast. Some of these you just kind of have to play with and get a, get a feel for it. Let's try this one really quick. Yeah, he kind of bounces forward and then slides back a little bit. Anyway, cool stuff. And that's just showing you the movement. Like I said, you could do that with rotation, scale, opacity, uh, all that stuff. Oh, hey, buddy, what's up? I'm starting a donut shop. How? Why? I love donuts. Move, I need that laptop. I'm kind of in the middle of something. Which template screams donut shop? Oh, Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website. They are sponsoring this video. So many templates, but no donuts. You can customize any of these. Add your own donut photos, your own branding. You can find any template to fit your business. That one, that one, that one. Got it. Add a donut. More donuts. Now that that's set up, we can keep in touch with your audience using Squarespace's email campaigns. We can collect email subscribers and convert them into donut eating customers. More donuts! Yeah, we can customize the email templates too. More donuts! We need to increase conversions! Chill! There's built-in analytics. We can measure the impact of the site and the visitors and even the impact of our emails. Donuts! Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm gonna jump over to another project that I have here because the other thing that I think is really, really cool are how they use the library and how they use symbols. So let me go to my library here and I have a symbol here called mouth. Whoops, I accidentally added that. Let me go back. If I tap and hold and then I can go to edit, 
Now what I'm doing is I am editing just this. So you can create mini animations and then nest them inside your animation. That's exactly what's going on here with my mouth. And so you can see here, uh, let me just hit play and you can see all my mouths kind of go at the same time. I can also come in here and it's it might be hard to see from the camera, but I've gone in and I've added uh, a little note for each one. So for example, I named this mouth A because that's like an A sound. I named this mouth D because that is a, a D sound. This is my S sound, R, L, M, B. So then I'm gonna go back to my scene here. Let's zoom in on this guy. Let's bring this open. And I also was able to add an audio file. So I just recorded uh, my voice, a really bad version of my voice, on the iPad, and then I was just able to import that file here. And you can see on the timeline, let me let me tap this, and I'm gonna bring up my properties. And then if I swipe up, there's a section here called Select from Markers, and I'm gonna tap that. Now what this has is all of those frames that I labeled before, my neutral mouth, my A mouth, my D mouth, my E mouth, and I could go into each frame, I could go to that frame, and I could choose the mouth that I want to show up. Now I want my neutral mouth, uh, so I'm just gonna neutralize that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play so you can see the mouths that I added in conjunction uh, with the audio. Could I take your order, please? So there you go. So I can listen. Could I take your order, please? And you can pinch and zoom on your timeline if you want, you know, a more detailed thing. So you can see that I held the E for four frames here. The L I only held for one. When I got to the P, I needed that that puh sound so his mouth was closed. So in general, I'm just super crazy happy with this. I've always been asked, hey, can I do the kind of animations you do in your videos on the iPad? And I always him and haw a little bit. There's an app out there called Calipeg, which is also very good, but I do rely on things like these little markers in Adobe Animate. In fact, I've been using some other things like Adobe Character Creator to kind of streamline it even more, but adding this is a huge time save. Also being able to have different characters saved as symbols, bringing them to over to my timeline and then being able to move them independently so I'm just not manually redrawing or copying and pasting frames and moving that frame a little bit. Also, just a huge time saver. I don't have to think about, okay, I want this to move for 10 frames and then after I've animated it for 10 frames, I'm like, that's too fast, I should do 20 frames. Here, it's very easy to just extend the amount of time that it's moving and that sort of thing. So that's the main thing I look for in an animation app is, I need to be producing like YouTube videos on a regular basis, so I'm not necessarily doing the finely crafted frame by frame animation that looks so good. It's like, I just need to use it as a communications tool. And this allows me to do that. It combines those things really well. And that's why I'm such a big fan of what Toon Squid is doing here. The only real complaint that I have here is the library. I had all of my mouths already pre-drawn in Procreate and I had to pull them over. So I exported them all as PNGs. I was hoping like maybe it would be able to recognize a Photoshop file. Right now it can't. Uh, adding PNGs is kind of a pain because you have to hit the plus, import from files, and then it goes over. You can only import one file at a time. So this particular thing had like, I think 15 things I had to animate. So I had to go plus import to files. And then when you import it, it automatically puts it on the canvas in its own layer instead of just to the library. So there's some things that could be improved and streamlined there. It's a little bit clunky, but once everything is in the library, I found it to be, uh, you know, a lot of fun to use. Yeah, so that is Toon Squid. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.